Okay, this uh, video is going to be to help us go over the genetics practice problems too. So go ahead and get that sheet out. Uh, let's take a look at the first one and see how we can solve this. Uh, the first one says the cross between a blue blah blah bird and a yellow blah blah bird produces offspring that are green. The color of blah blah birds is determined by just two alleles. So we're going to look at some context clues here to figure this out. So part A says what are the genotypes of the parent blah blah birds in the original cross? So for that, uh, let me grab the pen here. Let's take a look here. We only, we only have two alleles in this original cross. So what we can see already is that we have blue, uh, we have yellow, and we have green. Well, if you take a look at those, this should be screaming at you this is incomplete dominance because we have three completely different phenotypes. When we look at it a little closer though, we see that one of them, this green one, is actually a mixture of the blue plus the yellow. So what I would do is I would uh, let capital B stand for blue and let capital Y stand for yellow. Remember, it doesn't matter what letters you choose as long as there are different capitals for this because this is incomplete dominance. So if we look back up at the problem again, we have a blue one with a yellow one making green. Well, the only way to make blue would be to have two capital Bs. The only way to have completely yellow would be to have two capital Ys. And if we go ahead and do this Punnett square, what you can see is we have a blue and a yellow making every single square be a BY. A B with a Y together is going to be green. So that's part A. Okay, you didn't have to draw it out. You might have just been able to recognize it, okay? Uh, part B says, well, what's the genotype of the green offspring? Well, if you take a look, the green offspring are a blue with a, with a yellow, okay? Um, Okay, so the green ones are a B with a Y, and that's green. And then part C was, okay, now cross two green ones, okay? So we're going to need a, a green with a green, okay? And you could probably start to do these in your head. Um, on a quiz, I don't want you to do them in your head because that's how students are going to make mistakes sometimes. Um, they're going to be Y and then a Y, Y. And if we look at our genotypes here, we can see that we get this occurring. This would be a one out of four chance of a completely blue one. You see here a two out of ch four chance of the heterozygous and a one out of four chance of the homozygous yellow. And then phenotypically, what does this mean? What do they physically look like? Well, this one would be blue. It would be the same ratio here, one out of four. These here would be green. Again, same ratio here, two out of four. And these would come out to be completely yellow feathered birds with a one out of four ratio of those. So that's how you do the first one. All right, let's move on to number two. Okay, number two says, the color of fruit for plant X is determined by two alleles. When two plants with orange fruits are crossed, the following phenotypic ratios are present in the offspring. We're seeing we're getting a one out of four red, and I'm doing this right now with the problem, says a two out of four, the same thing as 50% orange. And we're seeing a one out of four yellow. That's just what the problem's telling us. We haven't really figured anything out. Number two is kind of tricky, because either you see what's going on right away or you don't. This is another incomplete dominance where if we had a red crayon, we could use it to make these red ones. If we had a yellow crayon, we could use it to make yellow ones. And if we use a little bit of red and yellow, we can make these orange ones. So again, recognizing this was incomplete dominance again was really half the battle with this one. So we don't have to do a whole lot with this one. Um, if you're still not quite seeing it, I would just take a Punnett square and make it show what the problem told us. Make one out of four red. Okay, so... I'll just kind of do this because we're going to use a red crayon and we're going to use a yellow crayon. Okay, uh, one out of four comes out yellow, so that would be here. And then to make those orange ones, you need one of each. All right, and that's what we have there uh, for number two. And it works and kind of do it backwards. If there's a Y here, that means it was also here because it came from up here. If there's a Y here, it was written here because it came from that parent. This R is the same as that R and it came from right here. And same thing here, this R and this R would have come from this parent. So that's the cross. They crossed two orange fruited plants and we got these ratios shown over here. And this just wants to know what's the genotype of the parent orange fruited plants. It's a red and yellow crayon. I mean, that's it. Okay, so that's your answer. 
Okay, on to the next one. Uh, number three, in a certain type of cow, there are two alleles for fur color. One allele is for white fur and one is for red fur. One is for white and one is for red. So one allele is going to, oh, let's not use that, let's just say, one's going to stand for red and one's going to stand for white. That's what we know. We're not sure what symbols we're going to use yet. All right, cows that possess one of each type have a coat color referred to as roan, which means some white and some red. Notice it did not say pink. So all we have is white and red. There's no other colors here. But a uh, heterozygous one is giving us white and fur on the same animal. Look through your notes. That's co-dominance, two phenotypes on one animal. Okay. So for this, we can use F for fur with the superscript R and F for fur with the superscript W. Because remember, co-dominance use these weird superscripts. Okay. Uh, the first part of three says, predict the phenotypic ratios of offspring when a homozygous white is crossed with roan. Homozygous white. Homo means two of the same. So a homozygous white would be this. And that is crossed with a roan bull. Up in the problem it says roan means some red fur and some white fur. Okay, so this is what we have. So they want us to do a Punnett square with this, these two organisms, okay? So let's just write it in here. And remember, you have to have two alleles in each box, and an F with a superscript counts as one allele, because we're putting genotypes of possible offspring in here. And what we're seeing as far as genotypes go, we are seeing F, R, F, W, two out of four chances of that. And the homozygous genotype, two out of four chance of that. Phenotypically, what does that mean? Uh, this one here would be what they're calling roan, which is some white fur with some red fur on the same animal. And this would be a completely white cow, and two out of four chance of that. Um, so that's number three. Okay, number four says, what should the genotypes and phenotypes for parent cattle be if a farmer wanted only cattle with red fur. Well, let's think about that. For some reason, uh, red fur cattle are very valuable all of a sudden. So all we want, and this follows the same logic as three, he wants a guarantee of completely red fur every time a cow has a baby. Well, let's just start with the inside because that's what the offspring will be. And what we want is this. Well, how on earth can we guarantee that? For some reason, this farmer wants no white fur on any of his animals. Again, if there's an FR here and here, it came from here. Oh, that didn't really come out. There you go. Maybe. Yeah, that's supposed to be an R. Okay. If there's an FR here and an FR here, it had to have come from over here. This FR is the same as this one because we can't. it came from over here. And then, you know, this one... And this one came from up here. There's your answer. Uh, for number four, that's where we're at here. Uh, what the farmer would have to cross is this homozygous red with the homozygous red. And that will guarantee a 100% or a four out of four chance that every single offspring comes out with red fur. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Uh, number five, a cross between a black cat and a tan cat produces a tabby pattern. Tab means black and tan fur together. Again, this is another co-dominance. Okay, so for 5A, um, hopefully you're recognizing this is co-dominance. Just like co-pilots on a plane. Two pilots, one plane. Uh, this is two kinds of fur on one cat. We're not mixing and making some kind of brown. We have tan with black on the same animal. We're calling that tabby. Okay, so we'll use maybe F for fur uh, and with a capital T. That would be our tan piece of DNA. And then we can go F for fur with a capital B, and that would be for black fur. And those are the only two uh, alleles we're allowed to use. Uh, 5B says, what percent of kittens would have tan fur if tabby is crossed with black? Well, tabby is black and tan on the same body with a completely black cat would be this. All right, we take a look here at our Punnett square. We would have FT, FB. Here we'd have the FB, FB. And then you guys can probably predict what's going on here.
All right, so genotypically, what we're seeing here is half of them come out to be heterozygous, and half of them come out to be homozygous with that black allele. Okay, phenotypically, what can we expect here? Well, these here is that pattern they're calling tabby. So that's a two out of four chance of that. And these are come out completely black. So the question is, for 5B, what percent of kittens would have only tan fur? It's zero percent. To have only tan fur, it would be FTFT, and that just never happens. So that's how you would do number five. All right, we skipped through six and seven. We'll come back to those uh, the next time we do some here. I have to explain those to you. Uh, let's come down to eight. Eight may have been very confusing for some of you. Uh, and let's, let me kind of go through number eight for you. In cattle, hornless is dominant. Okay, so this is a regular old dominant recessive one. Okay, because you're seeing a phrase like uh, something is dominant to something else. Okay, so hornless is dominant and then having horns is recessive. A bull without horns Okay, a bull without horns. So that means that bull has to have at least one capital H. That other allele could be a capital H or it could be a lowercase h. We just don't know yet. Is crossed with a cow with horns. To have horns, you'd have to have two of these lowercase h's. Okay, so that's our cross. We just don't know what that other allele is for that animal. So this is what I would suggest. Let's do the Punnett square and use an underscore as a placeholder because we're not quite sure what goes there yet. And so this would come out like this. This would be our underscore, and we know what that one is. This here would be heterozygous, and here we get this again. Okay? Now, let's look at what the rest of the problem says to figure out if we can know what goes in that placeholder. Of the four offspring, one has horns and three are hornless. One has horns, three are hornless. Well, guys, here's our hornless ones right here. We've already shown that. What we haven't shown is that having horns is a possibility because having horns is a small h, small h. So if we put a small h here, it would have to go here because it came from up here. Now, if you got stuck on this one, you got stuck because you read it as of the four offspring, one is horn and three are hornless. You thought you had to put them in the boxes like that, and that's not the case, okay? We have to show there's a, a, there's a possibility of not having horns and a possibility of having horns, and that's what we've done. Okay, so that's what the parents would be. Remember, a Punnett square does not tell you what the four offspring will be. A Punnett square just shows you what the possibilities are of having these different things. Okay? And let's just do one more here um, so that you have the answers. Let's skip over uh, number nine for now. I'll show you that one in class. Number nine is going to take a little bit more time than I have left here to record. Uh, so let's do number ten. In summer squash, white fruit. So we got white is dominant to yellow. Okay, so again, regular old dominant recessive. We're going to cross homozygous white. So homo means the same. So we have two capital W's with the yellow. That's got to be small w, small w. Um, you guys can put these into the square. And this one you could probably kind of do in your head a little bit. I'll try to small w, small, so you can tell what they are here. Genotypically. We're getting 100% or 4 out of 4 of the heterozygous. And phenotypically, if we come look up here, what does that mean? That means they will all be white. So 4 out of 4 chance of that. Okay? Um, and in the second part of 10, that F1 generation, that means the generation of the kids. Okay? What that means is in a genetic cross, I can show you really quick here. Uh, the P generation, and you might want to write this down, that stands for parental, parental generation, okay? When you cross the, the parent generation, that produces the F1 generation. That stands for first filial generation. You don't need to know that. Filial just means kids, okay? And then if you take the second generation and you were to cross those to see what genes were going on, you get something called the F2 generation, and that's the second generation of kids. Okay, so it's kind of like grandparents, kids, grandkids, and that's how we go through generations in genetics. It doesn't go any deeper than that. There's no F3, F4, F5. Pretty much, if you want to go beyond the F2, they sort of become the new parent generation, and you count down from them again. Okay, I hope this was helpful to you.